Now, before I go into this video, just be assured that Paul, my partner in crime, the guy who really does the in-depth technical breakdowns and so on, is looking at the rather lengthy comments from Mark Sony about the PlayStation 4 Pro and will be doing a technical analysis on them. However, this is just to discuss what Sony actually had to say, my thoughts on what it means, but if you want the actual in-depth technical analysis, then Paul is on the case. So, when he was speaking at a conference at Sony's San Mateo HQ, Sony explained that the hardware has been doubled within the PS4 to produce the better graphics and extra features and all other such things. Now, essentially, the console has two chips, and the system uses one to play existing games, and when a pro game is popped in, both of these chips will work together. And he said, quotes, we doubled the GPU size by essentially placing it next to a mirrored version of itself, sort of like wings of a butterfly. That gives us an extremely clean way to support the existing 700 titles. We just turn off half the GPU and run it at something quite close to the original GPU. Now, he also went on to discuss a little bit about the memory within the PS4 Pro. He said that his team and their games and everything else needed about 10% more memory, which is why they added slower conventional DRAM to the console, making it, quote, DDR3 in nature. And he said, quote, on a PS4 standard model, if you're switching between an application such as Netflix and a game, Netflix is still in system memory even when you're playing the game. We use that architecture because it allows for a very quick swap between applications. Nothing needs to be loaded. It's already in memory. On PS4 Pro, we do things differently. When you stop using Netflix, we move it to the slow, conventional gigabyte of DRAM. Using that strategy frees up almost one gigabyte of the eight gigabytes of GDDR5. We use 512 megabytes of that freed up space for games, which is to say that games can use 5.5 gigabytes instead of the five, and we use most of the rest to make the PS4 Pro interface. Meaning that when you what you see when you hit the PS button at 4K, rather than the 1080p it is today. Now, what's really interesting is that, of course, the existence of the Pro and, of course, the upcoming existence of the Xbox Scorpio have led many, including myself, to speculate that perhaps this could be a change in how consoles are actually released. We could see a change of the traditional console generation. You know, we won't see a PS5 for a while or Xbox 2 or whatever it ends up being called. But, according to Cerny, this isn't the end of generations and, to be fair, no one's saying that, just a different type of generation. But he seems to think that generations will continue pretty much as we know and he said quotes we don't believe that generations are going away they're truly healthy for the industry and for the gaming community it's just that the objectives of ps4 pro are quite different so let's look at the specs of the base ps4 versus the ps4 pro and what boosts we've actually gained here so of course we've got eight jaguar cores in the base clocked to 1.6 gigahertz and in the GPU, we've of course got 18 Radeon GCN compute units at 100 megahertz, and 8 gigs of GDDR5 at 176 rather gigabytes a second. As for the Pro, we have 8 Jaguar cores clocked at 2.1 gigahertz a second, 36 improved GCN compute units at 911 megahertz, and 8 gigs again of GDDR5, but at 218 gigabytes a second. So for the CPU, we have a boost of 1.3 times, GPU is 2.3 times, and we have 24% more bandwidth and 512 megs of usable memory. Sorry, more usable memory, should I say. So basically, for when you're in pro mode, the full GPU is out, you know, both GPUs are running together, they're doing great, they're running at 911 megahertz, which is a 14% bump in frequency, which is turning that two times boost in GPU power to a 2.24 increase. However, the CPU doesn't receive the same increase in raw capabilities. And Cerny did touch on this saying, quote, for variable frame rates, we're looking to boost the frame rate. We also wanted interoperability. Inter we want the 700 existing titles to work flawlessly. That meant staying with eight Jaguar cores for the CPU and pushing the frequency as high as it would go on the new process technology, which turned out to be 2.1 gigahertz. It's about 30% higher than the 1.6 gigahertz in the existing model. Moving to a different CPU, even if it's possible to avoid impact, console cost and form factor, runs the very high risk of many existing titles not working properly. The origin of these problems is that code running on the new CPU runs code at very different timing from the old one, and that can expose bugs in the game that were never encountered before. 
So there's a bit of an explanation as to why they stuck with Jaguar. That was something that was a bit of a point of contention when the Pro was first revealed that, yeah, we have this improved GPU, but of course we've still got the issue of the CPU. As you all know, you can have the best GPU in the world, but it is, at the end of the day, going to be CPU bound. And you can have a case where you have this amazing graphics card just being held back by a less powerful processor. So that's a small sampling of what Cerny had to say. As I said, a full analysis is coming, but it does give a bit more of an insight into the PS4 Pro, why they made the decisions they did, and what actual technical difference we're going to be seeing between the Pro and the vanilla PS4. So as I said, keep your eyes peeled for the full analysis. It is coming in the next couple of days. And yeah, that is me done for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this little preview. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time.